A reading from the book of Ezra. King Darius issued an order to the officials of west of Euphrates. Let the governor and the elders of the Jews continue the work on that house of God. They are to rebuild it on, former site, on its former site. I also issue this decree concerning your dealing with these elders of the Jews in the rebuilding of that house of God from the royal revenue, the taxes of west of Euphrates. Let these men be repaid for their expenses in full and without delay. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be carefully executed. The elders of the Jews continue to make progress in the building, supporting by the message of the prophets. Haggai and Zechariah, son of Iddo, they finished the building according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus and Darius and of Artaxerxes, king of Persia. They completed this house on the third day of the month, Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. The children of Israel, priests, Levites, and other returned to, to ex, returned exiles celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, and 400 lambs, together with 12 he goats as a sin offering for all Israel, in keeping with the number of the tribes of Israel. Finally, they set up the priests in their classes and the Levites in their divisions for the service of God in Jerusalem, as is prescribed in the book of Moses. The exiles kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. The Levites, every one of whom had purified himself for the occasion, sacrificed the Passover for the rest of the exiles, for their brethren the priest and for themselves. Verbum Domini. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Dominus Fobiscum. Et Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. 
He was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Verbum Domini. I would first of all like to welcome Father Deus, who is incarnated in the Diocese of Peoria, Illinois. Originally from Tanzania in Africa, which is just east of the area that I'm going to be talking about today in my homily. And as I mentioned, there are many people that suffer dreadfully as refugees and exiles. And today's first reading was a happy conclusion to the exile of the Israelites to Babylon. They had been taken there and were there for some 70 years and finally they are able to return, that God opens the door for them to be able to be, return to their homeland, to rebuild the temple, and finally to celebrate the Passover again, to return home and to have this happy conclusion to their exile. And so we pray especially for those in a similar situation today, that there will be, through God's intervention, a happy conclusion to their uh, situation and uh, exile presently. In one of the world's largest and longest running displacement crises, the so-called Lord's Resistance Army, the LRA, in Central Africa, has displaced as many as 2.5 million people. In Uganda, South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the Central African Republic over the last 30 years. The Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo's northeastern province currently hosts the highest number with an estimated 320,000 displaced people. As so I'm going to be talking about that situation, but first to give you one woman's description of what this exile and endurance that her family uh, suffered, what that was like. This is a displaced woman who's now in Dungu in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And she said this, she gave this testimony in July 2013. We fled Galima in 2009 as the LRA started attacking there. From there we fled to Benghazi, but we were confronted with the same problem as the LRA was attacking us. We fled from there to Nyangara. Because of insecurity, we fled to Baga. In an attack there, two of my children were killed and one was kidnapped. He is still gone. Two family members of my husband were killed. Then we fled, fled to Dungu, where we arrived in July 2010. On the way, we were abused much by the soldiers. We lost most of our possessions. Once in Dungu, we were first sleeping under a tree. Then someone offered his hut. It was too small with all the kids. We slept with 12 in one hut. Then we got another offer to sleep in a house at a church. The house was, however, collapsing and the owner made us leave. He did not want us there. We then heard that some displaced had started a camp and that, that we could get a plot there. When we had settled there, it turned out we had settled outside of the borders of the camp and we were forced to leave. All the time, we had no access to food. When we found this site, there we have stayed ever since. And so into this bleak 
situation that so many, as I mentioned, hundreds of thousands are suffering, entered a light, the lo someone who had the light of Christ. In fact, you can see this picture here. She has what is called a 1,000 watt smile. And she is a religious sister of the Augustinian, Augustine nuns of Dungu. And she was inspired, her name, name is Sister Angelique. And she was inspired as a young girl when a German nun had come into the area in which she lived. She grew up, she said, as a sickly child. And, uh, but she, it was a loving family that she grew up in. And at the age of nine, she was impressed by this German nun that had come there as a missionary and who was giving medicine to the people. And she was working so hard and she was alone. And so she thought to herself, well, I need to help her. I need to become a nun too. And so eventually she entered the novitiate and she took her vows in the year 2000, wanting to dedicate herself to helping other people. And so involved in that work, then all of a sudden this humanitarian crisis takes place and all of these, especially women that were enduring all of these atrocities were coming uh, to her for assistance. And so she founded what was called, uh, what she called Mama Bongisa, which means mother will improve things. And the women began to call her. She sees herself as a mother to them. They see her as their mother because many of them have lost their parents and all of these tragedies that are going on. And so she herself had suffered from being displaced for a number of months. And she talks about the hardships that she endured, being crammed into a tent and, and uh, the lack of food and all of the things. And so it gave her even a greater heart of compassion for these people. And what changed her own outlook when she was displaced, she said she began to sing a song to the Lord that she knew from, from church. Lord, do whatever with me you want. Do with me whatever you want to do. And she began to sing this song when she herself was displaced. And she has this inspiration that she is also to be one who's going to help these others to make their way. And so these, these women that had gone come to her, and it's interesting, you know, that she founded it, Mother Will Improve Things, Mama Bongisa. And what did the Lord say about those who are his mother and his brothers? He said, those, they are those who hear the word of God and they act on it. And so she said in an interview, the Lord identifies with those who suffer. So when I meet a suffering person, I realize that it is God appearing before me, asking me for help. Even if I have to get up in the middle of the night for the sake of a smile or a small promise that might help someone, I have to do it. I trust in God. It's he who gives me the courage and strength to keep on working. In fact, she converted a, a little three-room mud house into an orphanage for babies and for small children. She shares her own bed with three orphaned infants. But she still has time to counsel those who are displaced and teaching them, educating them, teaching them how to do practical things like baking and sewing so that they can earn a little income so that they are able to survive and make their way. To encourage them not to live as victims but to obtain the skills that they need in order to make their way and to be successful in life. And it said she's, she gets up three times during the night to feed orphan babies. She gets up at 6.30 in the morning to walk to the morning mass. And she says it's the Lord's work more than it's her. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm mentioning her is that the United Nations has an award for those who especially help refugees and displaced persons. And this year, she is the one that they have chosen for this award. 
which she will receive September 30th in Geneva, Switzerland. And after that, she's going to be going to Rome to meet with Pope Francis on October 2nd. And fortunately, part of that award that the UN gives is also a $100,000 contribution toward their work. And so that will be something that will help her to further help these displaced people. She said also in this interview, she said, I always treat them like my own children, those who come to her, because I know that what they've lived through is really beyond the imagination of anyone who has not lived through it themselves. It's incredible to imagine what these women have lived through, what atrocities they have suffered. They need to be brought together to be loved, to be able to forget a little bit about what they have lived through. Otherwise, we will have a lot of broken women, a lot of traumatized women, and if a woman is traumatized, a whole society is traumatized because it's the women who give birth and the women who raise the whole community. If I manage to help only one woman to rediscover life, she says with a smile, I will consider that I have been successful. So you and I know that there is much suffering and tragedy in the world today. And yet the Lord sends us to be those who help to alleviate that suffering, to bring some light of hope into that situation. That light of hope is Christ. And so all of us can do works of mercy. We know the traditional seven spiritual and corporal works of mercy, but there are, it's not limited to that. We know that there are many other ways. And I think as Sister Angelique had said, that when son, someone comes to us as a need, we see that as God's will. If we have the ability to be able to help with that need that a person is suffering with, that we see this as a way that God is calling us to serve them, to serve him in others. But just to mention those spiritual and corporal works of mercy, the spiritual works of mercy, which of course here at EWTN were especially involved in, to admonish sinners, to counsel the doubtful, to bear wrongs patiently, to instruct the uninformed, to comfort the sorrowful, to forgive offenses, to pray for the living and the dead. And the corporal works of mercy, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to comfort the imprisoned, give drink to the thirsty, shelter to the homeless, and to bury the dead. Our works of mercy are not limited to these, but each day presents to us new opportunities to practice charity. In this Mass, we are doing a spiritual work of mercy as we're using the prayers that the Church gives us to pray especially for refugees and exiles because we know so many are in, in that plight today. And thankfully, through the media of EWTN, we're able to reach the entire world with this. And I just invite all of our viewers and listeners to lift up especially those people that are suffering uh, in these situations, these atrocities, whether it's in the Middle East, so many people displaced there, or in Central Africa and other places where they've had it to leave their homeland, that like the Israelites, they too will have a happy conclusion to be able to return to their homelands with peace and security, with a decent living that every human person desires and that all of us uh, have a responsibility to help to realize. So may the Lord hear our prayers for all of these people in their difficulties today. May he help them to find comfort and may each of us bring that light of Christ as Sister Angelique does with that thousand watt smile and her encouragement and her indefatigable faith, uh, bringing whatever she can, her, her two hands, her hug, her encouragement, teaching them some skill to make their lives a little bit better. <laughs>